This is the story of how international peacekeepers are accused of betraying the trust of some of the world's most vulnerable people. At night it was very cold and the man offered my son a pill, claiming it would warm him. It took my son five minutes to fall asleep and the soldier violated him. It's the story of children being abused and of a culture of impunity. In July 2014, I informed the French government about allegations of French soldiers uh, abusing children in Central African Republic. Nine months after that, uh, I was asked by the UN leadership to resign. And when I refused to resign, I was forced out. The scandal began in late 2013 at this refugee camp, an airport runway where French peacekeepers protected thousands of people and their children from violence between rival militias. They and the UN helped to prevent genocide. But some are accused of becoming sexual predators. After the rape, he was crying and afraid. But the soldier reassured him and said not to mention the rape to anyone. Their son was 13. They alleged the soldier then threatened to stab him if he reported the rape. At first, our child tried to avoid us, hardly spending any time at home. When I asked why, he explained what had happened. His friends were mocking him because of the rape. Now he takes drugs and won't go to school or socialise with his brothers or sisters. The peacekeeping operation was launched by the French, but it would soon expand into a full UN mission. As peacekeepers from other nations were deployed, the allegations of abuse multiplied. Senior officials were made aware, but are accused of failing to act, apart from one brave individual. Anders Kompas was a senior UN human rights official who, in mid-July 2014, was shown an internal report alleging sexual abuse by peacekeepers. I remember I went home and I couldn't sleep uh, during that night uh, because I was struggling with what, what is it that I can do. At the UN offices in Geneva, Compass approached the country whose soldiers were the first to be accused of abuse. He leaked the report to the French, prompting them to start an official investigation. The UN was furious, claiming his action potentially endangered children. I was asked to resign for having given this report. Uh, and, and the accusation was that uh, I had abused my authority. The alleged abuse continued. A year after Anders Kompas alerted the authorities, this 14-year-old was approached by a soldier from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Her father was killed in the war, and her mother was ill and couldn't feed her children. Hunger drove my daughter to see this soldier. She was invited to eat. Afterwards, he took her virginity he gave her money, food rations, and took her to watch videos. The abuse had life-altering consequences. The girl became pregnant and was infected with HIV by the soldier. He abandoned her when he went home. There is no hope, no possibility for my children to go to school or my daughter to go to hospital. I suffer constantly thinking about my children's future. It took another month on the case of this girl, then aged 12, to push the UN leadership into action. UN troops had raided the family home to arrest a close relative. They started to bang at the door to shout, United Nations Police, get out of here. Her mother told me the girl had become separated from the family during the raid. She told me there was a man who took her. She showed us the place where it happened, but we found only blood. 
But this incident and the killing of civilians prompted alarm at UN headquarters in New York after being reported by Amnesty International. Enough is enough. I cannot put into words how anguished and angered and ashamed I am. The head of mission was sacked. There was a clampdown on abuse and a UN report would later harshly criticise senior figures, including the head of human rights on the mission, Renner Onana. It said he was one of the top figures whose failure to intervene exposed children to repeated assaults and stated he'd helped perpetuate a culture of impunity. But what's happened to Renner Onana? More than a year after being condemned in the UN's own report, he's been promoted and is seen here still working in the Central African Republic. The UN said Mr Onana wouldn't comment as headquarters was handling the matter. It's understood he rejects the allegations. We did speak with his boss, a respected UN veteran, sent in after the scandal. Why is he still in a job here? As an organisation, the UN has established rules and procedures. And in the case of the individual I just mentioned, the staff member just mentioned, a process is undergoing whereby he's being allowed to rebut the allegations against him. And that process hasn't been completed as far as I'm, I'm, I'm aware. Do, do you understand, and you're with the UN a long time, right. how it looks to the people who are critical of this organisation right. when you have that situation? Well, of course. Do you? For, for, uh, Everything that people say. Well, I do the understand. The lack of accountability. Absolutely. The bureaucracy. Absolutely. I do understand. We have processes, and those processes are now being, you know, um, uh, applied. And it's my strong belief that at the end of the day, uh, truth will prevail. Peacekeepers can only be prosecuted by their own countries. And while a whole contingent has since been sent home over allegations, there have only been a handful of charges. After two years of investigation, France hasn't charged any of its soldiers. It's terrible for the credibility and, and, and the trust of the United Nations. First of all, vis-a-vis -vis the people and the children who have been affected, but also to all the people uh, inside the United Nations, because these are the, this is a terrible message. The UN says new peacekeepers face strict controls. Even if there was only one single case left, it, was, it would be one case too many. So and our goal is a zero. It's a familiar UN promise. The hopes of the victims depend on it being kept. Fergal Keane, BBC News, Central African Republic.